Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Grassroots Racer. Firstly, a shout out to everyone who's been supporting me. I really appreciate your like, your likes and comments on my post. And tonight I have another awesome guest for you guys. And I always love speaking to a wide variety variety of people and this week is no exception she has not only worked on her cars but has also competed in a few different categories including being a rally co-driver and to find out more about her motorsport journey I welcome Maisie so Maisie how are you tonight I'm all right how are you normally I like to ask what got what got you into motorsport and how did it all start all right so um I have been very into cars since I was a very young age. So I got my first car when I was six years old and it was a Renault 12 called him Reggie Renault. And so that's where I learned to drive manual. Um, but throughout my whole childhood, dad was always taking us to the racetracks as a race fan and stuff, never did motorsport himself. Um, but it wasn't until we were at the Speedway in my hometown, Maruya. And there was this blue RX-7 there that was racing. And I fell in love with this car. I just, I looked at it and I went, wow, I really want that car. And I would have been about six years old at the time. And turns out it was actually one of my dad's mates. So went down into the pits, um, met the driver. um, And I started learning a bit about RX-7s and got very, very into rotaries. And it wasn't until I was... 14 I started doing motorcarnas and by then I had actually got my own RX-7 um I started doing motorcarnas just on the dirt in that and um as I got older I started learning to work on it myself and built it into a race car and started doing track days with my dad when I was 16 and um eventually came to uh stuff like tuning and that I couldn't do on the car I didn't know how to do it um so brought it up to Canberra and got a gentleman named John Waterhouse to tune it and he used to build my dad's rotaries so um yeah my dad knew of him for years and years and he had actually built that blue RX-7 I originally saw at the Speedway um but yeah so got John to tune it and I ended up working for John And through working for John, who is uh, an old rally bloke from way back, (laughs) I guess you could say, um, I ended up getting into rally navigating. And then through his connections with Rick Shaw, I got into the RX-8 Cup Series. And so I competed in my first circuit race when I was still 17. So that was super cool. Yeah, so you started out in Radicanas, like myself. Um, Did you enjoy throwing the car around? I did. Um, so I was doing the motorcarnas down in, it was Ulladulla or Nowra. It was with uh, the Skadak group and they still run the motorcarnas now and I really want to get back to doing one. But um, they used to run it out. It's like near an airport sort of thing. Um, it was super cool, like just the people you meet and all that. But it was so hard on the RX-7. I remember one day because it was the RX-7's bridge ported and I had the door open for too long and the brapping from the bridge port made the door fall off and then we went out and um, a terminal vibrated off the fuel pump at one point. We had a shock rattle out. So eventually we got a little Suzuki Swift and let me tell you, the cheaper the car, the more fun you have in it. I and agree. The we're in the Swift. <laughs> I agree. Um, I personally have a home by Getz which we didn't pay much for, and it's very fun to drive. Um, Front-wheel drive cars, but I do prefer rear-wheel drive. But as you were saying, you did minor carners. Uh, did you do navigating first, or did you do the RX-8 Cup first? I actually did navigating first. So my first ever rally was bigger rally in it was either 2016 or 2017, uh, and it was for a lady named Linda Lee. We are in her Datsun Stanza. And so it was pretty cool, my first rally being an all-girls team. Uh, We didn't place very well, but it was super cool to, like, have someone like Linda there showing me the ropes because she was a navigator herself. So she was able to teach me while she was driving. And then I ended up 
moving up and navigating for one of the Skadak boys that I used to do the Motokanas against. Um, I ended up navigating for him and his dats in 1600. Um, and now I navigate for a gentleman named James Price and we compete in a Ford Escort. Mark one or Mark two? Mark two. It's got a two point was worth in it. It's, it's quick. <laughs> Um, so after you did a little bit of Maticana, um, you did navigating and then you did some RX-8 Cup. Was it your dream to race um, in an RX-8? RX-8? Um, one of my dreams because I work as a rotary mechanic. So, of course, I had these RX-8s coming in all the time. And we actually had an RX-8 Cup car in once and we built it. And I was just sort of like, I- I'd love to do this. And my the first one we got, uh, we actually bought so we bought an already built one off rickshaw and it was sort of it was a bit daunting because just being thrown into a category um, like I hadn't really done all that much track stuff but um, once I was out there I was hooked <laughs> yeah so I, it's like the first time you go into a race car and you really love it you just get hooked onto it and you just love it so much. I, I remember the first time I hopped in the Formula V, the speeds that you do, so crazy, and you just fall in love with the car. Um, uh, see, I was I was pretty slow for my first one, but I felt like I was fast. But, yeah, it's um definitely the faster you get, the more you enjoy it, I have yeah. found. Like, I'm, I'm still not super quick compared to the other competitors in the category, but I have my little group that... um. We all race at the back and we all have the best time. Like we all get out and we're hugging each other and like clean racing and that's exactly how it should be. Yeah, 100%. Um, When you find that battle pack, I guess, that you you have a little fight in and you end up having fun, having clean battles and just really, and it's a group of people that you can really get along with. I find it, it's really nice. Um, Yeah, but you've done some mechanical work. Where did you go for an apprenticeship or are you still working on that? I'm still working in the same job. So I started working for John at Reliance Automotive, which is a rotary and motorsport specialist shop. I uh, started working for him when I was still 16. Um, started a school-based apprenticeship, which was meant to go for five years, but I ended up getting it done in three, which was super cool. Um, so, yeah, I've been qualified for two years well I got qualified in 2020 so yeah two years now um and yeah I just love it so much and I don't plan to ever leave that shop so when you were getting your RX-8 ready you had to get some um engine modifications done to it so you would know Ron Ambrose wouldn't you Yes, so um, I've recently built my first ever engine and it was my own engine and Rowan did the porting on it for me. So uh, it's a bridge-ported RX-8 road car, which is totally impractical and uses so much fuel. But um, I'm so grateful for what Rowan did for me and it just sounds so beautiful. So when we were having a chat, you mentioned how good it is to work on your own car and have put every bottom money by yourself. Did it take long to learn these skills of how to build your own car and race them? Uh, still learning, to be honest. Um, you, you're always learning when it comes to cars. But something that taught me very quickly was being at the racetrack with my cars. So um, a lot of the stuff, of course, in racing transfers over to the road cars as well. Like we were starting to notice failures on the race cars, like the tow arms breaking and that. And then we knew to look out for that on our customers' road cars. And eventually we saw a broken tow arm on a customer's road car and we just went, wow, okay. So um, because the race cars are under, I guess you could say, more extreme pressure, um, yeah, they, they break a lot quicker than road cars, but it's really cool to see the transfer over. And so I'm learning stuff for my job through my racing. So you're taking technology that you're and data that you've learned while you're racing and looking at the data to put it into the road cars to make the best customer experience. Yes, definitely. 
So it does sound like you're a big fan of Mazdas. Is there any backstory to that? Um, the backstory to the Mazdas is really just fallen in love with that RX-7 at the Speedway. And, like, before I was born, my dad had RX-2s and RX-3s and stuff. And um, I guess... I guess I was fascinated by the fact that this engine doesn't have pistons. How does it work? <laughs> like, it's just super cool. Yeah. Um, you seem to like giving your race cars a name. Where did you get the inspiration to come up with names? Um, well, it was funny because I never originally, so my first race car was Elvis and I never originally named him. Um but when I built Frogger, his first ever, well, sorry, it was when I um I announced the car, like I was sort of like, I just bought this bright green RX-8 and started building into a race car and posting online and stuff. Everyone in the comments was just calling the car Frogger and eventually it stuck. So um, it was actually Glenn Nichols, which is a, he's a race official. He um actually was the one that made the name stick. He just kept calling it Frogger to my face and I was just like, okay, the car's Frogger now. Um, and then, yeah, after that, we decided because when I started racing Frogger, we leased out my old car and it got crashed in every single race it did. So we decided to call it Elvis because more hits than Elvis. And um, then we let the internet once again name the new car when we released it, which is Dynaco. Very nice. Um, I guess everyone watching this will have to give me and name for either the Gets or the Formula B, you guys have a choose, um, and then we'll see what we come up with. Definitely. Once you name your race car, you're stuck with it for life, though. <laughs> oh, well, I've, I've always wanted to name my go-karts, but I didn't really know what to call them, and I never really had um, any inspiration. So I'll we'll give it a go let, see how we go. But the internet comes up with good names. <laughs> Um, when is your next race event and are you racing full-time on the circuit now or are you still planning on doing a little bit more navigating in the future? Um, I plan on doing both, but it's sort of hard. Like the the round that just went, um, it was originally meant to be next month. So our Winton round got moved for a month, which then clashed with Bega Rally, which is my favourite rally of the year. Um, and, of course, because I have the cars leased out and everything, I had to attend Winton. Um, but I do plan on continuing doing Rally In. Uh, my next RX-8 Cup meeting isn't for, like, another two months, so nice big break, but we're actually going to convert Dynaco into an endurance car and compete in the Sydney 300 next month. Wow. So um, are we allowed to know who you're doing it with, the minute? Um, I'm in talks with two people at the moment to run um, the three driver team and that will hopefully be Ben Shaw and Tom Shaw. We're still deciding, we're trying to figure out like if, if it's doable because there's a lot to do to the car to change it into an endurance car because from personal experience, endurance racing in RX-8, their diffs don't handle it because... Um, the exhaust runs next to the diff and it ends up melting the diff seal and you'll leak all your diff oil all over the track and everyone will hate you for that. Um, so, yeah, we've got to try and find a way to keep the diff cooler. We're maybe putting new seals in it at the, like before the event, heat wrapping the exhaust, even running a diff cool. Yeah, so there's a little bit of work to be done. So, so still decide. <laughs> So do you, do you think maybe a shield or something could also be a solution? Can you put a shield that can kind of we, block it off? We will definitely look into that. <laughs> um, well, if you ever do need a driver, I got my, my, got my Motorsport Australia's licence. Um, of course. We can do Winton 300. <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like a good deal. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to get a bit better at Winton, though. Um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very technical track, that one. Mm -hmm. um, what is your ultimate motorsport goal? And is there a car uh, category that you'd like to be racing in one day? Um, originally, I would have said my motorsport goal would be getting to GT racing. But now that 
I'm sort of running my own team where I'm running three cars and driving myself. I think what I really want to do now is run the team and help people move up into motorsport. So like at the moment, most of the drivers we've had in the cars have all been people that have never raced a car in their life and they're just getting into this. So RX8 Cup is such a good starting category for people and I think I want to run the team and help people get into motorsport. That sounds like such a great idea and I really like the fact that you've got your own team and you're there helping a lot of people because when we're having a chat before, um, you said even you go help your competitors in the the pit boxes go and fix their cars if something does go wrong. So you're a very generous person and it's good to see that you're running a team. Yeah, I do. I do love to help people. Like I have discovered, hmm, the category has discovered I'm the quickest at changing an RX-8 gearbox. So it seems to be whenever someone blows a gearbox, I'm thrown under the car. <laughs> do you prefer working with a hoist or do you like the challenge of doing it on the ground? It depends what the job is. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, have you got any supporters or sponsors that you'd like to thank? Um, I do really need to thank Sequel. Um, so Southeast Quarries and Landscaping, they've been there from the start. So um, they helped me purchase the race car when I first started. And, like, honestly, I wouldn't be here without them. Um, I've had Tool Force Canberra jump on board, SP Tools, and they've just been so handy with like I can't work on the car if I don't have tools, and they've also helped me in my workplace, um, getting me toolboxes and stuff. So that's just been so awesome. Um, look, all my supporters, <laughs> they're so amazing. S Sport Racing always supply me with the gear to build the race cars, which is super handy because building a race car isn't cheap, and. I've built two from scratch now, so they've just been an absolute godsend. So it's important to have supporters who do support you. and It, it was great chatting to you tonight, Maisie, and I look forward to seeing you um, prof- professionally in, in the future. Hopefully, you know, not over Zoom because it can be a bit tricky, um, as we have figured out. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um Hopefully I get to see Winton or something or maybe Wakefield if I do end up going up there um, at some point. Um, It's been pretty cold down here. Um, Maybe not where you are, but if you're racing this week, everyone, remember to drive fast and take chances, everyone, but safely, of course. Thanks, Maisie. Thank you.